Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. A Nigerian lawyer, Douglas Ogbankwa, has narrated how he was harassed and faced death threats while representing the interests of one of his clients at the Department of State Services. Ogbankwa, who made this known via a series of tweets on his ex-profile, narrated that the DSS principal staff officer slapped him and threatened to kill him for being assertive towards protecting the interests of his client. In his tweets, the lawyer alleged further that the DSS officials took offense just because he insisted that his client should not write any statement without his presence as his counsel. Well, over the past 63 years of Nigeria's independence, the issue of fundamental rights of citizens and the need for government and its various agencies to endeavor at all times to protect those inalienable rights have always assumed a pride of place at every point in time. While this matter is one that provokes debate even beyond the borders of Nigeria, but on a day like this, and with strong emotions still trailing the circumstances that birth the last electoral process, we believe it will be appropriate to seize the opportunity to take a look back at the human rights record of successive Nigerian governments. And joining us now to help us to help out with all of that is Sonny Ekuwose, a lawyer, human rights activist, and Chairman, Human and Constitutional Rights Committee of African Bar Association. Mr. Ikuwusi has been a delegate to the United Nations and is currently Executive Director of the Foundation for African Cultural Heritage. Good morning. Good to have you in Thank the studio Thank you very much. Us. Happy Independence. Happy Independence. <laughs> Thank yes, you. I'm very happy much. to be here on a day All like right. this. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, let's start with the grand picture, like, yeah. you know, from what we read out in the introduction. Uh, human yes. rights. Uh, in 63 years uh, has been one of the key factors that you can say that you are measuring the progress of a country by. How would you assess the last 10 years and then the grand, you know, 63 years? Are we getting better? Are yes. we improving? Where are we in terms of human rights? There's also uh, the right time we are discussing it because uh, you know that the, the, um, there's an ongoing activities to assess Nigeria human rights activities. Um, the last one, the United Nations Universal Peer uh, Period, you know, review, the activities are going on on reviewing uh, Nigeria human rights uh, performance in the last, um, I think, five years. The last one was held in 2018. And the fourth one is going on now. Um, there's going to be a section on the 3rd of October, and I'm invited to participate in it. So this is the right time to discuss uh, Nigerian human rights uh, performance since independence and in the last uh, 10 years. Well, you know that we have had uh, seven coups, you know, since uh, all this time when after Nigeria got her independence. And the 1979, we finally betted into, well, the civilian regime. And um, even at that, you know, we have had continuous violation of human rights by uh, state actors and non-state actors and um, it's still going on right, right now. And it's very, uh, it's of enormous concern to me because if uh, human rights violations are not checkmated, the country is definitely not going to make any progress. You know that one of the pillars of economic development, one of the pillars of political development is a rule of law. Hmm? And actually the reign of um, expression of human rights, the reign of expression of freedom of speech, and so on and so forth. But right now in Nigeria, I'm afraid that um, we have not had it. We're not having it, you know. Since independence, of course, it's a series of violations of human rights. And you mentioned the recent case of a violation of, of a assault on uh, Douglas Obangba, the strategic communication director of the African Bar Association. That is not new. It has been going on. And um, lawyers being harassed in the course of performance of their duty to their of rendering services to their clients are not new. Not just lawyers, but also other professionals, also other people who have been, uh, whose human rights have been uh, harassed and been uh, uh, violated. Well, there are many aspects of it. I don't know where you want to start. Since independence, if you go to the police station, you see people whose human rights have been violated, who are kept in, the, in, the, in, just, in detention for nothing, for doing nothing. I don't know the last time you went to the prison, but uh, I go to the prison once in a while. If you go there, you see 
large number of Nigerians who are in detention, who, whose human I mean, who are not been taken to court because they are waiting trial emails, who are there, whose uh, case are not being taken to court, who are just, you know, I mean, dying in prison. All for right. that. For, for the so benefit this, of our viewers, we yeah. just mentioned um, Douglas Obanka. I'd like you to walk us through what really happened. I know that he narrated his ordeal in yes. the DSS, and he talked about the fact that he's scared for his life. Yeah, he like, went to, I mean, his client was invited for questioning by the DSS, and uh, he accompanies the client. And while uh, sitting in the, I mean, they were waiting in the, in this, in the waiting room, and then his client was called to make a statement. Usually, according to law, if you're a lawyer and you, your client is going to make a statement, you have to be by the side of uh, your client mm. while she's making the statement. So while you try to accompany his client, Jesus says, say, look, you can't do that. You have to wait. And he said, look, no. By all means, I mean, in accordance with the law, I have to accompany him while he's making the statement. So they refused. And um, at a point, they asked him to, 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 I mean, to leave the place. I mean, to, to I mean, so... He told the clients, okay, fine. Now that they have asked us to go, let us go. While they were trying to leave the, the premises of the DSS, and then they shut the gate against them, and then they say, shut the gate, I mean, they, 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 they started manhandling him, and they dragged him and he, along the floor and all that, and they finally detained him and all that. And, um, and he kept on saying, look, I have a right to render service to my client, you know. I'm a lawyer. Don't beat me up. I was beaten. He was giving seven slaps, no? Okay. <laughs> I said, that is humiliation, one humiliation too many. For a lawyer who is just trying to render service to a client, he has not done anything, he has not committed any crime and warranting such a, such a treatment. And like, like I say, it's not just only uh, Douglas. I mean, many people have suffered in the house of DSS just for nothing, you know? Of course, DSS, they have power, but what we are seeing is a gross abuse of their power, you know? to do things as if they are not guided by law. Nobody is above the law of the land. All of us, you know, we are all, not, we are not above the law of the land. So for the DSS to be doing this, it is something that is despicable, something that is condemnable, something that cannot, should not be allowed to, you know, to, to. and we are hearing this because Douglas is a lawyer. Mm. They are not lawyers or other people who are just harassed, you know. We know you have the case of, I think it was last week or so, women who were just selling you know, vegetables along the road somewhere in Lake. And then they were just harassed and all that and then their vegetables were taken and all that and and they started crying. These are women who are trying to eke out a living. So do and you do you consider that a violation of human of course, rights of course, or they have, civil yes, they disobedience? Have, so, no, I mean, no, they, they have they have a right to eke out a living. I mean one thing or the other. And before you start yeah, molesting but, but, but them, see their vegetables. Not against lay down. Uh, yeah, because, uh, laws of but the before you start doing that, you have to hear them. You have to don't see their goods. They have to be taken. They have to be a fair hearing. But there's nobody's giving a fair hearing. Mm. You no, know, you are just your goods are you know taken and you are arrested and you are doing no, that. No, what let's, what let's, are saying, let's, even let's if it's a law, yes. that. Yeah, yeah, if it is about the yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 the trading yeah, uh, law along the roads, exactly. uh, along the road, you know, uh, tr uh, street trading yes. in Lagos. What fairing are you talking about? No, I'm talking about don't I mean, don't um, yes. put your wares, yes. you know, on the streets, yes. on uh, 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 walkways, etc. No, but no, no, but uh, how else do you think the government no, should have communicated? No, what is that? This, this thing, these rules are, I mean, just arbitrarily, um, I mean, I mean, uh, enforced in the sense that you don't even know where. You don't have to sell, you don't have to hog your things and all that. Don't forget that these people, traders are providing essential services, you know. By our way of commerce, we are not supposed to buy all, all our needs in the supermarket, you know. So these people who are staying along the road, you know, they are providing some services. What I'm saying is that you don't just, you know, arbitrarily arrest them or, you know, you have to be some way of, first of all, hearing from them. Why are you doing this? And then, it's only when the law, it's only when the, there's a judgment or when there's a mobile court that has passed it that you can now, you know, imprison them or so or even confiscate their, their goods. I think it's not right. There are series, just there are series of such judgments. Yes, yes. Series. Yes, but the, know, the, against the not, environmental. The proper thing is not to, yes. you know, also use jungle justice, you know, because two wrongs cannot make a right. If you say they are 
not trading properly. They are along the roads and all that. Okay, that is wrong. If you see it wrong, they don't use that wrong to correct I'm it. sorry, but I yes, don't think that this can be justified as human yes. rights violation yes, at this I mean, point. Because if you're doing something that contravenes the law, yes. yeah. that is a but different you have case. To, first of all, I would you're, like for you're us to know about the actual yes. what, mis I'm, what I'm saying is that first that of all, give the person a fair hearing, you know? That's just one aspect. There are many, right. okay, of these violations. I just started it because it's something that's called for pity. You know, a woman who's just trying to make a living. Right. Do you want the woman to go and steal, you know, or whatever? Yeah, and something like that. Because anyway. there's a very thin line between what you're saying and what, yes. what, what you've also said and what my colleagues are saying even takes me back to a video that was circulating where we saw the Lagos State the Kai uh, offices. Yes. Um, not, not even outside of the Kai offices where he was appealing to these women that you, you referred the to yes. um, yes. um, where, um, selling their wares by where this real, where, like the this, real by, by, where the world is going to pass right. and he had to warn them that yeah. I have no he issue with you selling you your, uh, your goods but if you now go and set up where the rail is going to be you could lose your lives and you could even oh, affect I'm, I'm the, completely the against saying not real. I'm so talking how about would you rather it's other it's parts handled. other parts of the state not just on the rail but other parts of the state along the road where you have people who need who wants to buy things I mean because this don't forget that these people are reading services and people are patronizing them mm. I'm against the one who are saying on the rail that one is completely wrong but other ones you have to consider them what are, I'm saying are you trying is that to justify I'm not it in traffic, for I'm example. not justifying what I'm saying is that, look, they have to that provide should alternative. Things. It should be an alternative to this. There people. are alternative providers. Yes, they, they are not. They are, you know? there are. And then, first of all, give them a fair hearing. Hear them before you start with them. I don't believe in juggle justice. You won't believe that the person is doing something wrong. Please, please, go by due process. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to justify what they are doing. I say, give them due process. What would that due Even process? That, that process what, means, what would the due process, due process mean? Means, Hearing from the person, prosecuting, taking it to a mobile court or whatever. But that's what they before do. Before you do, but don't that's you, what you they know? do. But you don't just grab, confiscate the goods and throw them away and beat them up and all that. I don't believe in that. So I'm not saying that. I mean, I don't mm, know about yes, the exactly. beating people beating them up. That's, and that's their obviously is a, that. is a yes. violation so you have to of your human right. I'm against, but I mean, yeah. confiscating goods. I mean, yes. I don't think that we should be discussing that in terms of exactly. human rights. Anyway, I mean, yes. if, you, if yes. you're talking about actual yes. abuse, then that yes. is a different case. Okay. But yeah. I'd like to first go back to the actual uh, matter. Yeah. Hand, which is taking yeah. a look back at human rights uh, records um, in successive governments. How would you uh, judge that? Well, I think it has, uh, it has not uh, improved. I mean, on paper, it looks as if I mean, the government is willing to improve, but in practice, it has not improved what you are saying. Even the freedom of expression by journalists and media men, which you know is not supposed to be violated. It's going on today. Somebody expresses his view, and it's called by the DSS to explain why making this type of a statement, you know. Many of, them, many of them are not reported, but they are going on. It is completely wrong. You mentioned the abuse of violation of human rights during the last election. People who wanted to vote, they weren't allowed to vote. Hmm? In one way or the other, or that after their vote, something happened and so on and so forth, their votes did not count. That is also a violation of human rights. Then you can talk about non-state actors, you know. People who are just beaten up, arrested, or tortured in one way or the other. They are going in fact, when I was coming this morning to, to, your, to, your, I mean, to, your, to your studio, I met a man, I saw a man who was being lynched by people who are guarding, maybe a suspect, suspect that have stolen something, and they just beat him up. In the Southeast, you have so many of this is going on, violation of human rights, people who are not, like I said, giving a fair hearing. Something happens, and the next thing you see is to grab the person, and start beating him up, and oftentimes the victim is killed. It is not right. And then the one that is very annoying is executive lawlessness. No? And we are saying that government not obeying the laws. No? It's not just starting with this government. The last government, I mean, the last eight years of Buhari government, we witnessed a lot of that. This obedience to court order. And also government choosing the court order to obey and the one not to obey. What we are saying is that you can't have um, you can't you can't have a, pro, a, a you can't make progress by violating human rights. You can't make progress by not allowing the rule of law to reign. Okay, you can't get investors to invest in Nigeria if there is no rule of law. If there is no mechanism in which those investors could, you know, um, I mean, um, promote their I mean their human rights, who protect their business one way or the other. So that is a big concern to me. 
And um, I'm listening to the president uh, broadcast this morning, and he said a lot of things, including the uh, 25,000 25, naira uh, wage uh, increase. You know, all these are palliatives, you know, that we're not going to live on that. What we need to do is to have a policy in place that sustains the life of the people, and one of them is the reign of the rule of law. If we don't have it in place, we are just wasting our time because rule of law is the basic thing. It's, is, is the pillar for any democratic society to thrive. And if we don't have it, it, it is just a pity. Mr. I mean, the, the, I mean, I could go on and on and on the uh, issue of, um, you know, you may not like the person who has done something, but by not obeying the law, let me just, in case of Godwin MFL, uh, former uh, governor, I'm not holding brief for him. I'm not, he must have, he must have done so many things that were wrong. But if the court has given an order, that this man should be granted bail. Why not do that? I mean, okay, despite the hatred or whatever, the same thing with the canon who has been in tension and all that, the court has been and all that, it's not been obeyed. All these are wrong signals to the international community that Nigeria is actually not, um, as I said before, the periodic review is going on now, it was the periodic review, there's going to be a meeting in of October, that nations is contacting Nigeria to, to, to abide, I mean, to protect human rights, you know? They ask Nigeria to, to bring reports, you know? So they're trying to assess Nigerian human rights in the last uh, five years. The last one was done in 2018, and now a new one has been done. So all these are wrong signals to the that we are not, there's no human rights, uh, uh, respect for human rights in, in Nigeria. Mr. It's not good for us. I'd yeah. like to come in here, I mean, talking yeah. about these experiences that you've mentioned, and also in light of Mr. Ogbankwa's experience, you've spoken about mechanisms that don't, uh, that, that don't e that exist in Nigeria. To, uh, let's talk about those mechanisms that are supposed to hold these security agencies accountable for human rights violations. How effective are these uh, mechanisms in ensuring justices and preventing future incidents? And also, let's talk about the MBA's role in all of this, when we really back to what happened to the lawyer. If you look at the initiatives undertaken by the Nigerian Bar Association in addressing the challenges being faced by lawyers dealing with security agencies on behalf of their clients, the goal of the MBA Security Agencies Relations Committee, I think that's the MBA SARC, how effective have they been? Because even regarding this case, it almost seems as if the MBA wasn't really saying much. And they're supposed to be, the Nigerian Bar Association is supposed to be the ones, at least on the back end, helping push and making sure that these mechanisms that are in place are implemented. Thank you for that. Thank you. It's very important because... Um, the mechanisms, I will, I will, I will, I'm sorry to say, are not very efficient in terms of, uh, you know, safeguarding human, human, human rights. Like the Bar Association as a body, fine. I mean, the, the public is somehow disappointed that they are not uh, forthcoming in trying to protect the human rights. In the past, the NBA used to be a firebrand in terms of protecting the human rights, speaking out, protecting the people, being that last hope of the common man. But right now, it seems as if um, they are not forthcoming. But the African Bar Association has come out to condemn this, you know? That's to say, look, this is not, but not just because the person involved is the uh, communication director of uh, the African Bar Association, but say, look, first time violation of human rights in, in Nigeria should not be, I mean, I mean, tolerated. Then also, one of the best mechanisms is also the, I mean, the, 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 the judiciary, okay? People whose human rights have been violated, when they go to court, do they get justice? Okay, the answer is yes and no. Yes and no in the sense that if you are lucky, you could get justice. And oftentimes you don't get justice. I was telling you about people who are languishing in detention. You may, you may, you may interest you to know that 70% of the tenants in Nigerian prisons are people are called that watching trial inmates. People whose cases are not even taken to court. Okay? So that is, you know, we have to be also the Attorney General, Federal Attorney General, as another mechanism, the office should be bringing this things. I mean, out and say, look, taking cases, people who are languishing in prison, to court, and so that they can be granted their freedom. Also, the civil society should be outspoken in this matter, not just only the government, outspoken and, you know, um, creating awareness, telling people whose human rights have been violated to go to court. You know, the greatest victims in this are children and women, you know, whose rights are women who are busy. We're talking about, okay, we, have, we can't even mention the case of rape, that's like rampant now, that's another violation of human rights about the case of sexual assaults that are also... So there are many aspects of that's it. That is rampant. Yes, rampant. Rampant in the sense that, well, here in the news and all that, 
a special court has been created in, in, in Ikeja for sexual assault, you know? Maybe now, there's no week I don't get this uh, unsavory story of somebody being molested and all that, surgery and all that. This does not all go away for us as a people, really. You know, we can't live in peace, you know, with this, all these violations. You know that human rights is not just something given us by the government or the constitution. It's also, it's a natural right. We are born with those rights, you know? Right to express yourself, right to go to school, right to eat, right to conduct your affairs the way you want. But right now, it's not done like this, you know? Incessant cases of violations going on in the country, and they are not good for us by state and yeah. non-state actors, because it's not just only the government uh, agency, but also individuals. Human beings are just taking the laws into their hands. I'm sorry to say that right now, when I live as we are living in a lawless society, people can, your enemy might well lay you on the street and start beating you up. And that is it. Nobody comes to your assistance, you know? So it is something that is not right. Okay, you know? let, 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 me, let, yes. let me direct this in this, you yes. know, um, yeah. maybe look for uh, a few positives yeah. in there, Ayeni. Uh, in looking at the human rights record of a country, uh, it can be all bad. But it can uh, be, no, it can be, be all bad. Exactly, be because bad. To, to claim that it's all bad, it's, no, no, it's not all bad. In terms of policies and we have the National Human Rights Commission. Exactly. Yes. So, yes, in which areas do you think that we have recorded some progress? I think we have recorded the issue of the National Human Rights uh, Commission and uh, directed that people whose human rights have been violated should, they are, they are, I mean, there should be justice, justice given to them. And I'm very happy about that. We also have um, the case of individuals who are taking. There are many lawyers who are rendering many pro bono services now to those who are in detention, and they are doing well. They are getting people who are unjustly detained released. Also, the Nigerian like, Association, don't forget, has the Human Rights Committee, which I'm happy to be a member, and um, they go to magistrate courts and try to see, see um, take up cases of people who, have, who are languishing in prison, and they have rendered, I mean, they have achieved uh, some success in this, in this area, even when they are not reported. So, Things are happening in that in that uh, in that regard. And also, don't forget that well, many of our many of our judges are also doing well in the sense that uh, they try to give accelerated hearing to cases involving violation of human rights without asking for necessary adjournment. So this is also something that is a positive. So and also, don't forget that we have ma many laws apart from the constitution. We also have laws being protecting human rights. But these laws should be there should be more enforcement. You know, some have been enforced and others should be enforced. What I will suggest in this discussion is that we should have, you know, the, the, the more people trying to assist in this area and not just leave it to the government. I mentioned the civil society. Also, I also like the MBA to accelerate action in this regard, to set up more committees to ensure that people whose human rights have been violated um, get justice. We are talking about the case of Douglas. I suggest that that, that incident should be investigated. And if, I mean, those who are, I mean, the corporate should be brought to book. They should be brought, I mean, I mean, I mean for the law. So as to, it will serve as a deterrent mm. for the DSS and other, other agencies to just violate, violate people's uh, human By rights. Wait, stuff like this. Let's find out who that actual person was that well, stopped Well, yes, the investigation is still going. The African bar is in need. They are trying to set up investigative, investigative committee to find out who was actually but whether the person can be brought to... Did he mention a name? No, he has not mentioned a name yet. Okay. We think that uh, through investigation, the host is going to come out. Right. And then we also... Um, okay, the, you know, is there any dimension to it, you know? Innocent people who are motorists, who are being harassed here and there, you know, it just amazes... It just... It just yeah. people, at times, it can be... It can yeah. be discouraging, but we can be... We have to be optimistic that uh, all is not bad. There are efforts to... You know, well, to, speaking about that, unlawful yes. detention, yes, another yes. topic that you wanted yes. to discuss yeah. here was about the Nigerians that are in Ethiopia. Exactly. Some are um, in yeah. death row, yes. and also there was this viral video of this you young for that. man Thank you for who yes. talked about the fact that some Nigerians have been violated in yes. prisons in Ethiopia. You have called thank on you. the Nigerian thank you. embassy. I mean, thank, I mean, thank you for that. That is and something that should be accepted because it said that many of them, some of them are that. dying. A woman, has, a woman has actually died because where they are kept, they're not being given food. They're just giving a spoon of rice every day. He said this specifically. And he said, look, I am not telling lies. That video you are talking about, one doctor, SDK, a medical doctor, who said, look, he went to there and said, look, there's something wrong going on here. And if, 
immediate action is not taken. Okay? Many of them are going to there, many of them are Nigerians. You know? You know that this matter has been going on for years. Detention of Nigerians abroad, you know. Nigerians people who are traveling, you know, and just because they are carrying a green passport, they are just, you know, honestly harassed and uh, later on they are detained and all that. I think our, um, our embassy should be forthcoming in this. The Nigerian government should always watch out for this, you know. Abike Dabi did a lot, you know, when she was there, you know, she did a very fantastic job in trying yeah, to that's what intervene. That's what it's we need, we need more of uh, her, you know, people like her to always intervene, eh? To ensure that because often these people are just on front up charges, you know, because they are carrying a green passport. It's unfortunate. But we have to, because when you intervene, you find that these people have done nothing. They are not criminals, and they are not taken to court. Often they die, they are left to, to die in detention. It is not right. And Nigerian embassies outside should be doing a lot, because Nigerians are complaining that, look, oh, they are not forthcoming when it has to do with protecting their interests. And that reason for setting up those embassies to protect the interests and welfare of Nigerians abroad. So in this case of Ethiopia, I think Nigerian embassy in Ethiopia should do something immediately because to save the lives of these people who are, who, are, who are being detained, you know, for I don't know what. So it is something that we have to be giving, you know, um, very urgent attention because it has to do with human rights. And don't forget that any of us can be a victim of all this, you know. It's not just people who are out there. Any of us can be a victim. I can be a victim. You can be a victim. So we need to have this, you know, it's something that is very urgent. It's even more urgent than the economy because you can't have a good economy without protecting human rights. You can't have investment without human rights. You can't have um, political progress. It is the most important thing. And the judiciary is not just any institution. Judiciary is the institution that expresses justice, okay? Yeah. So our judges should also try to give attention to um, uh, cases that have to do with human rights violation. People have said that there should be a special court for human rights and all that, human rights violation and, every, and, and everything. I think it's, um, without setting a special court, judges should give attention, you know, to give priority to cases that have to do with human rights so that people who are urgently detained, I mean, who are unjustly detained, should be, should, I mean, should they get justice, you know? It does not tell away for Nigeria that many people are languishing in police stations and in prisons and nothing is done to accelerate their case so that they can get their freedom. Because the Constitution says if somebody cannot be taken to court or cannot be granted bail, set him free. Only when you are ready to mm -hmm. take him to court, you can then be arrest. But you can't keep him in detention for donkey years without taking him to court and without um, and, uh, admitting him to bail. Okay. That is completely wrong. All right. Um, you made reference to the speech the anniversary speech of the yes, president yes. earlier, and uh, you mentioned the 25,000 yes. <laughs> allowance, <laughs> which I'm sure will yeah, we'll be coming get, to you. Because we'll come to me. I hope I will get it. I hope I will get but it. But beyond that, uh, if you listen to the yes. president's speech or you've read of what he yeah, said, yeah. Uh, what will you be your um, assessment of the promises you know he made and the general, you know, the, the, the general outlook of? Of his yeah. speech, it's, it's his first. Yeah, as I, the think, president I think on I think this uh, first right. I mean, uh, it looks serious. The speech looks more serious. I mean, on 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 the on the face of it, as is is as if the president is 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 willing, you know, with that speech to to make things happen in Nigeria. I mean, by saying that look, we have to move forward. We have to get off the ground. Mm? Apart from the priority, because I don't think the priority is actually a way of helping people. You know, I think that. It's not just enough to say, I'm giving you a spoon of rice or I'm giving you a priority for 5,000 naira. We need to set policies going, something that to have institutions working. You mentioned the central bank, for the central bank is making to revamp the economy and all that. All those things are good, but we need to see them in the coming months. Let's see them working because people are suffering, people are dying, you know, under the truth. It's something that is, is, is completely appalling, you know. Let's see. Um, let's walk the talk, as the normally say. You know, we have to go beyond rhetoric, you know, and say, look, what specific, concrete things that should be done to alleviate the plight of the average Nigerian? Like I say, it's not just enough to give palliatives, you know, 
And by this, going by the current inflation rate, the first thousand dollars is almost like nothing, you know? But inflation is just... It's not a, it's it's not, it's not a, a thousand a day. It's not a thousand a day. So, <laughs> a I think this, apart Sorry. from that, the first thousand dollars, let's have more policies, <laughs> things that can sustain the people, that can sustain the families, they have to pay school fees, they have to feed, they have to... Let's talk about employment, you know? What are opportunities for employment? I always suggest that the government should be interested in making the enabling environment work. Let us have constant electricity supply in Nigeria so that people can use their God-given talent to make out a living for themselves, you know? Government cannot employ everybody, but if there is a good road, you have electricity supply, you have um, uh, whatever, rail treat uh, system of transport, people can move and make money for themselves and that is self-employment. It's, it's possible. So, enable the environment, let us have it. And of course, security, okay? Let's have people, you no, know, people should not be harassed. People should be free and safe to go about their normal businesses and do, and, and try to take care of the living for, I mean, I mean, for themselves. So, it's very vital that we create the enabling environment, you know, for, for things to work. I'm curious, uh, you know, in cases like Mr. Abakawa's and, of course, even other human rights uh, uh, cases where, uh, you know, citizens and you know, face threats of violence, uh, is there any role that international organizations and the global uh, community, the global legal community can play in supporting their Nigerian uh, counterparts for advocating for human rights and rule of law in this oh, country? Oh, fantastic, because, you know, Nigeria is a signatory to so many human rights treaties, you know? And, um, but unfortunately, some of those treaties are not. First of all, starting with the Universal Declaration of Marriage in 1948, we state, everything stated there, you know, that had not to violate people's rights and all that. And also, like I mentioned before, this Universal uh, Period Review that is coming up, ongoing now, and uh, the International Committee is taxing Nigeria to improve the human rights uh, record. They are not saying that everything is completely bad. They are saying that, look, in some aspects, like this, you know, Extrajudicial killings, this thing of torture, this thing of um, you know, you know, uh, trying to harass people when when they are doing their job, and this thing of the state department, state agencies not obeying the rule of law, not obeying court order, and so on and so forth. This international committee is concerned about this, and they have stated it in their uh, whatever in the documents that they are, they are, that they are reviewing on on Nigeria. Unfortunately. One of the items that is there is the uh, uh, sexual orientation, the LGBT and all that. <laughs> and uh, you know that we are Nigeria, that is a very, uh, it's a gay area. That they are also saying that, look, it's also a right that Nigeria is falling short sexual orientation. But there is an anti-gay law in, in Nigeria. How do they want us to promote uh, LGBT rights and even transgender rights? Because as far as they are concerned, all those are also human rights. But the question we keep on asking, who has made the human rights? You know, in Nigeria, yeah, we have, you know, very, uh, I mean, uh, dangerous human rights violations. We're always starting to talk about rights of gay, rights of, uh, you know, transgender. You know, to them, it's human rights, but to us, we don't regard them as human rights because of our sensitive cultural values, our sensitive, way of, I mean, way of life that, you know, we have these things, religious upbringing, that these things are not for us. We don't regard them as violations of human rights, you know, because. Everything cannot, license cannot become a right. You can't say license is a, is a right, you know. Stealing is a right, and this and this. No, no, it cannot be right. Mm. So they are going too far over there. But we are glad that they are asking us, taxing us to promote genuine human rights, you know. All right. Which I know that, uh, you know, like to. Okay. <laughs> Let's take a see. We want to thank you very Thanks much, very for, much yes. for this time uh, yes. on the morning show today, yes. this special day of yes. Nigeria's 63rd anniversary. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah.